Um, at this time, our next performer is someone who really needs no introduction if you're from the town of Medfield, Mr. Kurt Jackson. <laughs> Kurt is an artist, educator, master storyteller, and father, father of two ki kids. He studied both art and theater at the college level, and now Kurt works as the site director in MAP, the Medfield After School Program, where he's been since 1995. He serves on the board of directors of the Zulo Gallery, just downtown, where he has been leading children's art lessons for at least 20 years, and they're sold out. I can never get, them, get my children in time. And as it relates to today's performance, Kurt has shared his storytelling talents with hundreds of organizations, groups, and gatherings for even longer. So please give a warm welcome for Kurt. Woo! Oh my goodness, what an introduction. How'd you find out all that stuff about me? <laughs> what a day, huh? It's perfect. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. We are, um, we're lucky to have this come to our, our town of, of Medfield, and I feel very fortunate to, to be part of this event. Uh, I just had some, uh, a, a kid ask me, they said, Kurt, uh, when you get up to tell stories, do you just stand up and then just tell a story? Or do you know what you're going to tell? And, um, and I, I told her that I, I do. There are times when I do like to make up stories, and I will tell you one of my made up stories uh, today. Um, but I also like to, to think about the event that I'm at and make the stories relevant to, uh, to where we are and what's going on. So I decided today that I would tell stories from different cultures. So my first story is about a silly farmer, and this uh, is a story from Africa, and it goes like this. So once there was a silly farmer and his wife, and they were going to have a baby, and they didn't know what kind of baby they were going to have, and they wondered, what, what kind of baby are we going to have? And they wondered and they wondered, and then finally, the silly farmer said, I will go ask the wise woman who lives at the base of the mountain. And he got a piece of gold from underneath his mattress. He got his walking stick, and he told his wife he would be back. And then he walked, and he walked, and he walked, and he could see the mountain off in the distance and finally came to the base of the mountain. And there he saw a small hut and he knocked on the door of the small hut. And the old wise woman opened the door. I love having a microphone, by the way. She looked at him. She said, what do you want? And the silly farmer said, well, my wife and I, we're going to have a baby. And we want to know what kind of baby we are going to have. She said, ah, yes. So she went back into the hut. She grabbed a small bag. She brought it outside in front of the hut. She reached inside the bag. And there she had four bones, old bones. She took the bones in her hands and she shook the bones. And she dropped the bones on the ground. And she looked at the bones and she said, Ah. And Saeed, the silly farmer, said, Ah. And then she went, Ah. And then she picked the bones back up and. And Saeed, the silly farmer, said, oh. And again, she said, ah. Ah, yes. 
Saeed said, ah, yes. She picked the bones back up. She put them in her bag. And she told Saeed, the silly farmer, Saeed, you are going to have a boy or a girl. And Saeed said, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. He paid her the gold coin and he walked home. And he told his wife, we are going to have either a boy or a girl. And they were happy. And some months later, sure enough, just as she said, they had a baby girl. Well, they were happy. But they didn't have a name. And they thought, what shall we name her? And they couldn't think of a name. And then Saeed, the silly farmer, said, ah, I know, I will go and ask the old wise woman. She will know her name. So again, he went under his mattress, grabbed another gold coin. He grabbed his walking stick, and he began walking. And he walked, and he walked, and he walked. Until he came to the base of the mountain, and there was the hut, and he knocked on the door. The door opened. Out she came. You are back. Yes, I am back. You were right. We had a baby girl. But we want to know her name. She went in, she grabbed the bag with the bones, she brought them out, she put them in her hands. Ah. Saeed said, ah. ah. in the bag. She said, open your hands. Open your hands and I will whisper the name of your baby into your hands. Do not open your hands until you get home. And Saeed said, okay, I will do this. So he opened his hands and the old wise woman closed his hands. He gave her the coin and off he went. I have the name of my baby in my hands and I will not open my hands until I get home. So he walked and he walked and he walked and he walked until he came to the farms of his land. And as he was walking, all over the ground, there was hay. And as he walked over the hay, he <laughs> slipped and out went his hands and he hit the ground and he said, oh no, oh no, I have lost my baby's name. I have lost my baby's name. And he looked all over the ground. I cannot find my baby's name. And all the farmers came out and they said, what is going on? And so he said, I cannot find the name of my baby. Please help me. So all the farmers began helping Saeed, looking all over the ground to see if they could find the baby's name. And then a woman walked by. And she said, what are you all doing? And Saeed explained to her, 
Oh, I got my baby's name. The woman whispered it into my hands and I carried it home and I tried. But I fell and I dropped my baby's name and we cannot find it. And the woman just shook her head and she said, it's nonsense, simply nonsense. <laughs> Saeed closed his hands and said, thank you, thank you. And then he went home and he told his wife the baby's name. And to this day, her name is Nonsense. <laughs> Simply Nonsense. The end. Thank you. Silly story. Um, so I have another story. Uh, a, a lot of times when I tell stories, uh, th I think there should be a lesson not just for kids, but adults. This is another story from Africa, and it's about a reckless hunter named Indaji. Now, hunters in Africa were almost known, if you were a great hunter, you, you were this great person. And they all, they, they, they even thought that you possessed magic. And uh, so it, Indaji was this great hunter who was well known about the land. And whatever he pointed his arrow at, he always hit. And his spears always hit its mark. And any animal he had in his sight did not have a chance. Well, because Indaji was so great, and he, and he started off you know, hunting one animal a day, and then it went to 10 animals a day, and then 20 animals a day, and then 100 animals a day. And because he became this great hunter, he became very rich. He had lots of cattle and goats and horses. And he was well known. Well, one day, the god of the forest was very concerned and came to Indaji and told Indaji, you have everything you need. You have great wealth. You do not need to hunt all the animals that you are hunting. From this day on, you are only allowed to hunt one animal a day. And this would be enough to feed your family. It would be plenty. And if you do not heed my warning, you will regret it. So not soon afterwards, Ndaji was hunting and saw three antelope that were grazing peacefully. And Ndaji killed all three antelopes. Well, the god of the forest spoke to Ndaji in the forest and said, this recklessness will cost you your life. Then, those three antelopes turned into three fierce lions and leaped to their feet and ran after Indaji. But Indaji possessed magic powers. So Indaji turned himself into a songbird and <laughs> flew away. But then the three lions turned into three hawks and chased Indaji through the skies. But then Indaji, with his magic that he possessed, turned himself into a tree. The three hawks lit on the tree and turned themselves into fire and burned the tree to ashes. 
And that is the end of that story. So I like to ask, I like to ask the kids, what does that story mean? Does anyone know what that story means? What is the importance of telling that story? Anybody want to come up here and, and say anything about that story? Uh-oh, here we come. What's your name? Daddy. What do you think the importance of that story is? Not doing too much. Yeah, that's exactly it. Did Ndaji hunt too many animals? Yeah. And what happens if you hunt too many animals? Too yeah. And then they'll all go away, right? Yeah. And then what would we do without them? Yeah. We have no food. What else? No lettuce. No lettuce. You're right. You're absolutely right. There's a lot we won't have without the animals. How are you? telling me about the bones, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. What's your name? Shoshana. Thank you, Shoshana. And what did you want to say? It's about our community. It's important to take care of our community. Is that what you mean? What's your name? Hadley. Hadley, thank you so much. It's all about these young kids, right? Hello, what's your name? I'm Dak. Hi, Dak, how are you? Thanks for coming today, Dak. What did you want to say? Um, um, I, um, 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 teachers are really fast. You're right. And they're amazing animals, right? Thank you so much for saying that. They're so unique, all of our animals. And we have another one. Come on up here. What did you want to say? Good. You're doing good? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Such tiny feet. Thank you guys so much. Let's see if I can get back on this stage. All right, let's see. So I have another story for you. And um, this story, I, I actually made this story up because uh, I was teaching a lesson at my after school program. And I thought it was a great way to, to, to help the kids remember something. Come and get her! <laughs> so, uh, so thousands of years ago, uh, there was a tribe, and this tribe lived in, in Eurasia. And in this tribe, there was a young boy and a young girl. And the young boy was named Lone Wolf because, as a young boy, he had found a young wolf pup that was abandoned from his pack. And he befriended it, and this wolf would follow him around everywhere. So they named him Lone Wolf. And this girl, well, she became wind in hair because of her swift feet. She was very, very fast. And Lone Wolf and wind in hair used to love to play this game. 
in which they would go into the forest and they would run. And Lone Wolf would run and it was Windenhair's job to catch him and tag him. And they would run and they would run and they would run. And well, just about when Windenhair was about to tag Lone Wolf, he would say, bearing right. And he would turn to the right. And Windenhair was running so fast, she'd just keep going. And then because she was so fast, she would catch back up with him and she'd be right behind him. And then he'd say, bearing left. And he would turn to the left and she'd go, shh, we're flying past. Well, they loved playing this game. And then sometimes they'd be running, running, running. And he'd say, bearing, and she was right there, bearing, and she was ready to turn left or right. He's bearing straight. And he'd keep going straight. Well, this was their game, and this is how much fun they had playing this game. Well, they became friends. As they grew older, their love for each other grew older. And every morning, the two of them would meet up on this hill, up on this very, very large stone. It became their dream stone. And it was a place where they would share their dreams, their fears, and their hopes. And they would sit and they would tell each other. And Lone Wolf, his dream was to become a great hunter like his father. And Wyndon here wanted to become a great leader of her tribe. Well, Lone Wolf, just about every morning, would go to his father when they were ready to go on this great hunt. And he would ask his father, can I go, please, father? And his father would always say, you are not big enough and you're not strong enough. And as for Wyndon here, she would go to her mother and say, mother, I would love to lead the council tonight. How can I lead the council? And her mother would say, Wyndon here, you are not wise enough yet. Well, time went on, and one morning, Lone Wolf had a dream. He dreamed of this white buffalo. And in his dream, the white buffalo was a large white buffalo. And the white buffalo was running toward him. <laughs> and then, the closer the white buffalo got to him, the more afraid he got. And finally, he woke up from his dream. Well, that morning, he met on the rock with Windenhair, and he told Windenhair of his dream. He said, I believe this dream has meaning. Well, that morning, he went to his father and asked, if he could go on the hunt. And this was the first time his father told him, yes. So the next day, he was going to go on this hunt. And he told Wyndon Hare, and Wyndon Hare made him this arrowhead necklace with feathers on it and beads, and she gave it to him. And he put it around his neck. And the next morning, he got to go off with the hunters of the tribe. Now they walked north, they went further and further north until they decided that there, that was going to be where they made their, their their camp for the night. Well, the next morning, well, they made a fire, and the next morning, the hunters prepared to go. And Lone Wolf could not wait to go on the hunt. But his father told him that his job that morning was to tend the fire. 
because the fire was so important. And Lone Wolf was very upset. But Father, I want to go on the hunt. He says, this is what all hunters must do first. The importance of fire is very, very vital. So off the hunters went, and Lone Wolf was left there by the fire. Well, soon he heard a noise and he felt the vibration. And it got louder. And then he heard trees being split, broken. And he and his wolf hid behind a large stone. And sure enough, out through the woods came a very large white buffalo. It went right through their camp, put out the fire, and kept going, making a path through the woods. When the hunters got back, they asked Lone Wolf why the fire was out. And Lone Wolf went to tell them what he had seen, and they couldn't believe him. They wouldn't believe him. And then his father brought him aside and said, Lone Wolf, what is that you saw? And he explained to him about this large white buffalo. And his father told him, as a kid, that he also dreamed about the, a large white buffalo, but had never seen it. So they went back to the village. And the next morning, Lone Wolf, well, he met Winden here on their stone. And he told her what had happened. And then he also told her that he had had a premonition that he would go away. But he would be back. And if he could not come back, he would send a message. Well, some time went past, and Lone Wolf kept dreaming about this white buffalo. And one morning, one early, early morning, he felt a rumbling in his soul. And it woke him up. And he could still feel this rumble. <laughs> so he came outside. He climbed up the hill. And he felt the rumble. <laughs> and he saw a tree splitting. <laughs> and sure enough, the white buffalo came through the trees, past the stone. And he leapt from the stone onto the back of the white buffalo and it disappeared into the snowy mountains. The next morning, Wind and Hare went to the stone waiting for Lone Wolf, who never came. And she knew something was wrong. So she went to the elders and said that Lone Wolf was missing and they had to do something. But they told her the importance of staying where they were, how it provided so much food for them. And she didn't know what to do, so she went to her mother. And she said, you, you must tell the olders, you must convince them to go and find her. So she went before the elders and she told them. So they decided they would go. So they all packed up their things and they walked and they walked northward and they kept going and they kept going. And then they heard something off in the distance. <laughs> and running through the snow, there was a wolf.
The wolf had something around its neck. It was covered in white fur. She unwrapped it, and inside was an arrowhead necklace. She knew who the arrowhead necklace was from. Inside of the fur, a message was written. And it said, Bearing Straight. Well, they came to where this path was that the buffalo had made, and the path had split into three different directions. One left, one right, and one in the middle. And they didn't know which way to go. But Windenhair said, I know which way we should go. We used to play this game. And in this game, I would chase him, and he would say, bearing right, or bearing left, or bearing straight. In the message here, it says, bearing straight. We should take the path in the middle. And so the tribe followed, and they walked, and they walked for days, until finally, they came to a valley. And in that valley, at the base of a valley, they saw a very large white teepee. They walked down into the valley and came down to the teepee. And the teepee opened and out came who? Lone Wolf. He had made it all the way to a land that they now call North America. And the path that they chose to go was called the Bering Strait. So to this day, there is still, well, during that time, it was an ice age, actually. And people were able to travel from Asia to North America. And they say that's how the first people came to this country at least to this continent. So I had, um, that's the end of that story, but I, um, thank you, thank you. So I, uh, 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 a couple of months ago, had, uh, had a, uh, an email from a, a former uh, MAP student, Medfield After School Program, and he had told me he was in his senior year at the University of, of Vermont. And he was in one of his classes. And the teacher asked the class where the Bering Strait was. And he said nobody in his class knew where the Bering Strait was. He said he was the only one to know where it was. And he thanked me for telling him that story. So it made me feel proud. Um, just one last quick story, and um, just to say goodbye. So this, this story comes from Haiti, and um, do, do, kids, do you know, what do birds do during the cold weather? Oh, we were close, she said hibernate, but he said, migrate. They migrate to a warmer place. And uh, in Haiti, many of the, the, the birds fly there for the warm weather. And usually in the spring, they all gather, and they all gather on the island of Haiti to go back. And it's a big celebration. All the animals come to the island, and they're all ready to, to watch the birds migrate back. And there was Turtle, and Turtle was always talking, 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 talking. And Turtle finally was like, I, 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 where are you going? And Crane said, uh, I'm going to go to Boston. And Turtle said, I, I want to go to Boston. I want to go to Boston. Let me go to Boston. Let me go, let me go, let me go. Let me go. And Crane said, all right, I have an idea. I will take the stick, I will hold it in my mouth, 
and you hold on to the stick with your mouth. And as long as you don't say a word, I can fly you to Boston. And Turtle was so excited. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to Boston, I'm going to Boston. He's running around the island. I'm going to Boston, I'm going to Boston. So finally, Crane was ready to leave. All the birds started <laughs> taking off. Crane put the stick in its mouth and told Turtle to hold on. Turtle grabbed the stick with its mouth and <laughs> they flew. It worked. It was working. Turtle was so excited and looked down and saw all the animals waving. And Turtle could not help itself. It looked down at all the animals and said, bye-bye. And when Turtle said bye-bye, Turtle fell a very long way, hit the ocean, and cracked its shell. And that's why today, turtles have cracks in their shells. The end. So with that, I will say bye-bye. Enjoy, enjoy this day. It's a beautiful day. We have more performers for you guys. Thank you so much. And I'm going to give you guys to Julie. Thank you. I appreciate that always.